Hey, we're live. Hey, YouTube. Denise Spazzola here. I am um, wanting to do a little teaching tonight. And um, one of the common, most common myths that I hear around aggression and the causes of aggression is this thought that more socialization is the is the way to get your dogs to stop being aggressive. So it couldn't be further from the truth. And we're going to talk about that tonight. The only way to stop your dog's aggression is to look at the whole dog. You've got to look at the whole being because just like there's things that are affecting you, right? There's your beliefs, how you were raised, your genetics, like who, like what genes did you get from your mom? And what genes did you get from your dad? And do you have a lot of anxiety? I am not an anxious person, yet I have three daughters that are all anxious in various forms and formats. One's on medication, two are not. And I think that it's coming, you know, and there's some genetic component to that, right? It's not like, it's not like nobody in my family has, has some sort of anxiety, but somebody does, right? But there's some genetic component to that. And this thought that, hey, my camera's following me around. This thought that our, if we um, parade our dogs around more dogs or around more people, or if we try to take more things away from them, or if you have dogs that are fighting together in the home, you try to get them together more often, that will solve all your problems. And along with this myth about more socialization is a lot of blame and shame for dog owners because you guys get the brunt of it. Everybody has told you, you didn't socialize your dog enough or you need to socialize your dog more. You say it to yourself. I've had, I had an email today where the vet said to the owner, um, this is a result of the dog not being socialized enough. And they don't even know the dog is a rescue dog. He's three years old. They just, they've had him for a couple of months. They don't know what his past has been like. So we're just making these big, broad assumptions that lack of socialization has caused all these problems. I have a, a lovely dog, Gio. He's not in a chair today because he's eating, who was probably not really well socialized. He was on a, he was with a breeder. He was in New Hampshire. He went south. Um, he might've been on the show circuit. He was with other dogs, but he wasn't like socialized in the way that we think about exposing puppies to, um, traffic and sirens and kids and bikes and skateboards and hats and winter outfits and things like that. Like, like he, that didn't happen for, for him. And when I went to see him at 11 months and I brought him home to sort of test drive, I thought, well, you know, we'll see how this goes, but he wasn't socialized. So mm, I'm not sure how this is going to be. The fact of the matter is, he's fantastic. He's a great dog. He's as perfect as they come. And it didn't have anything to do with socialization. He's got great genetics. He's got great genes where he's confident and mellow and emotionally regulated. And he's not worried about the environment. He's not worried about no noises or sounds or cars or other dogs or anything. He's not worried about anything. As long as I'm there, I'm his anchor, he's happy to go anywhere. And we've brought him to many, many places, the city, the beach, wherever, that had nothing to do with his socialization because he, probably, he wasn't socialized in the way that I would socialize a dog. Okay. But yet, when we believe that, oh, I've got to socialize my dog more, um, my dog is aggressive because I didn't socialize him enough and everybody's telling you this, then what happens is you um, enroll your dog into doggy daycare. You may go to dog parks. You may walk around dog parks. You may parade your dog around more dogs. Walk. Can my dog meet your dog? Can you give my dog cookies if your dog has some stranger danger and is worried about people that he doesn't, he or she doesn't know? Um, if your dogs are fighting together, maybe you just keep trying to get them together and hope that this time will be better or, or you yell at them or whatever it is, but you just keep them together and you hope that the fighting will, will, will stop on its own. If your dog is resource guarding, you may have tried to be more dominant, more alpha, show them who's boss, take things away more frequently, um, all sorts of things. And it, and yet when you try these things, 
you know, you may end up feeling a little bit like a failure because your dog is still having problems with aggression. You still can't walk your dog um, and feel relaxed on a walk because your dog turns into this twirling dervish, barking, yelling, growling, carrying on at the end of the leash every time he sees a person or another dog. It's embarrassing. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's mortifying. Who wants, there's, there's not nothing enjoyable about walking a dog like that. So you do all these things. The dog isn't better. You still feel like a failure. Like you haven't tried enough. You haven't tried harder, hard enough. Maybe hopeless, blamed, shamed comes to mind, um, and embarrassed. Some of you have just stopped having your friends and family over because your dog has either already bitten somebody um, or you're worried he's going to bite somebody. Your yard and, and driveway is posted to stay off so that you don't worry about the dog biting anybody. And I will also tell you that not only do you feel frustrated, embarrassed and are struggling but your dog is struggling because aggression isn't fun you guys aggression is taxing it takes a lot of energy it burns a lot of calories and most aggression is rooted in fear anxiety stress it's very rarely is it sport right like it just it's just very rarely it's not sport if you have a you know police officers and state troopers and the military, they're looking for those dogs that aggression is sport for them, right? They need that drive, but that's not, that's not what's happening with you guys. And, and you didn't cause it. You're not to blame for your dog's aggressive behavior. I really want you to hear this um, because I, I sat down with a family this week and they felt like such a failure um, they have dog aggression to dogs outside the home in a very serious situation. And they feel like, you know, they didn't do this and they didn't do that. And, and I, you know, I go in looking at the, the whole dog and trying to put the pieces together. And I think there's a lot of genetics involved in this particular case because I can't identify like the thing that happened to traumatize the dog, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So more socialization is the worst way to stop your dog's aggressive behavior. And I will tell you that the only way to stop your dog's aggressive behavior is to start looking at the whole dog, their health, their genetics, their past, their past in terms of all the way back to puppy dumb, if we can get back that far. Many dogs have a big hole in their history because they, they're rescued or they were found on the street. We don't know what's happened to them. Nonetheless, we're still gonna ask the question. But we need to ask why why is my dog behaving this way? And what has happened to my dog? And I'm going to do a little drawing for you. And I'm going to hopefully do it in a way that you will be able to understand it. So we're going to talk about trigger stacking. And we're going to give the example of three dogs. These are cups. So. This is doggy A. What other letter will look <laughs> the same on this? Um, we'll call this doggy V so that you can see this. And um, we'll do this to doggy C. If I do it backwards, I think it'll be perfect. How about that? Okay, so let's just make this. I'll do that, do it backwards. Okay, we'll do doggy A, B, and C because I can't write dog names backwards. And we're gonna, these are cups. And what we're gonna talk about is trigger stacking. So my goal in this, in this uh, short training is to explain to you why more socialization is the worst way to stop your dog's aggressive behavior. And I'm gonna, and I want to tell you what trigger stacking is. Now we have another video on trigger stacking that you can go and look at, but this one's gonna be a little different. So doggy A, we're gonna do a baseline of anxiety in every dog. And I can't write anxiety backwards or base. So doggy A has just a little bit of anxiety. Doggy B has a little bit more. And doggy C has what we call like a generalized anxiety disorder. And poor thing, he's got a lot of dog, a lot of anxiety. And these are real dogs. This is Geo, my yellow lab. This is Jubilee, our, um, Unfortunately, she recently died, she was 15, but 
She was our recovering reactive dog. And this dog, C, is based on a dog named Ernie, who has been with us for a board and train and, and um, a variety of other things. And he's a very anxious dog. So in the house, right out of the, right out of the shoot, minimal anxiety, a little bit of anxiety, and a lot of anxiety just in the house, right? This dog is anxious, thinks the world's going to end, sights, sounds, uh, walking too fast, uh, getting up too quickly, all sorts of things causes this dog. He's already anxious in the house before he even steps out into the world, okay? Then let's look at, now we're going out for a walk, and green, our green marker is going to be um, they see, what did I have on my notes? They're going to see a dog. So Geo sees a dog. Eh, he doesn't particularly, he's not too worried about other dogs. He likes to go and visit with them. Jubilee, this is going to fill her cup up pretty significantly because she was a cut recovering reactive dog, meaning she was very reactive to dogs that she would see on a leash. And Ernie, he was very friendly with other dogs. So the dogs themselves would not cause him too much anxiety. Okay, so green is dogs. This is going to be backwards, but I'm going to need this so I know what I'm doing. So it's going to be backwards for you, but I'll, I'll see it. Dogs. And then um, let's say a bike went by. Okay, so a bike be one line for Gio. He'd notice it, but he's not anxious or worried about it. Uh, Jubilee, not particularly worried about bikes. Something that moves, that's what's more interesting to her. Ernie uh, is going to lose his mind about bikes. So his cup is going to start to run, run it over, as we say, because bikes are huge. He's very concerned. They, they trigger him in a very big way. Okay. Okay, now we go a little further on our walk, and we see um, a jogger. So joggers are nothing for Geo. He doesn't care about them. Or oh, we're going to give Doggy B or Jubilee. She's going to get a little line for jogger because she'd be interested to know, is there a dog attached to this jogger? Remember, because she's a recovering reactive. And then poor Ernie, joggers just throw him over. Just, he can't cope any longer. So on this walk where we are thinking that we're going to um, help this dog overcome his fear of other dogs, bikes, and joggers, he is so stressed out. He's stressed out before we've even left the house, remember? And now we've seen these three things, and he's lost his mind. He's barking, lunging, growling, cannot control himself. And now every little thing that he sees is, is adding to this stress. So, so this thought of more socialization, I think that we say it interchangeably as if we were saying desensitization. And socialization and desensitization are not the same thing, okay? Yes, you could desensitize a dog like this, like anybody. Like we just, we worked very hard with Jubilee Doggy B on desensitizing her to the sight of other dogs. But we always worked her program. We worked her program to the day she died. It was never something that was done, and we got to put a check mark off of it, and then we could just walk her willy nilly wherever he wanted to. No, that, that was never the way it was. And it's not, that's not the way it is with any serious behavior issue like aggression. So when you think you're that more socializing, getting your dog out around the things that scare and frighten them is, is what you need to do to help your dog get over it. It is exactly the wrong thing to do. There is a way to desensitize your dog. But exposing them more and more and more to the same thing without playing with the variables. And the variables are distance, how close, right? How close or far I am from the thing makes a difference, right? 
the closer I am to the thing that scares me, the in, more intense the reaction, and the further away, the less intense. So there's distance, there is time or duration, and I know this is backwards for you guys, but how long I'm going to be there, right? How long I'm gonna expose my dog to the other dog. And then there is intensity. So what is, is this a mellow, laid back dog that we're exposing the dog to, or is it a little yappy chihuahua that's barking and giving a lot of eye contact? Those are not the same levels of triggers. Then if you've seen any of anything that I do on, on um, any place, Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube, you know that I am afraid of spiders. And the bigger, the darker, and the faster it moves, the bigger the reaction you're going to get from me. And no, I don't want to go to a spider zoo or museum or anything. I don't want to be around them. If I'm going to be around them, I need a lot of choice and control. I need the thing far away. Right there, there are certain parameters that um, that we need for desensitizing. Desensitizing. I'm not gonna write the whole thing down. So remember, socialization is not the same thing as desensitizing. It's not. And more and more exposure, exposing your dog to more and more dogs taking more and more things away from your dog, trying to get your dogs together without managing it properly, and they continue to fight, or um, stranger danger dogs when you, when I don't know, I don't know many people that try to have more people over. Usually if you're, if you're worried about your dog biting people that comes into the house, you just stop having people over because it's so stressful. So listen, the only way that you are going to stop your dog's aggressive behavior is to look at the whole dog. You need to take a 30,000 foot view. We need to look at genetics. We need to look at their health. We need to look at their environment that they're living in. We need to look at what they've learned in terms of not just things you've taught them, but experiences that they have had and what they, what your dog has learned from those experiences. And then we put all the pieces together in a, to this puzzle so that you can stop your dog's aggression once and for all. You can be your dog's hero. It's not, it's not, you don't need me to train your dog and you don't need to send your dog away. And I know that many of you have spent and hired many, many trainers and you've spent thousands of dollars um, trying to get this problem solved. Now, I am... It's been a while since I've done a live, but I've got a couple of links. I've got a link for you. And um, let me see. I think I can put it over here. Yes, I can. So you have an opportunity right now. Let me look for this while I'm talking. To We have an online course called um, Revealing Your Dream Dog, Ditch the Aggression, Not the Dog. We have people in it from all over the country, including Canada. Hang on. Revealing your dream dog. Ditch the aggression, not the dog. Here is the link coming at you. We have this online course that's amazing. That we have people in it from all over the country, including Canada, and they are seeing incredible transformations in their dogs because we're looking at the whole dog. Almost all of them have hired more than one, two, three trainers. Some of them have sent their dogs away to board and train with no luck. Um, some of them use shock collars. Some of them have been to balance trainers, the whole gamut, the whole gamut. And there are many of them had said, I had no intentions of doing any more training with my dog. And then I saw your program. So I'm gonna give you the quick little synopsis of the program. But when you click on that link, it's going to take you to the sales page. You're going to see everything that you need. If you want to join us in the course, mentorship level is a four-month four -month course. You are in a private Facebook community where you can post videos, ask questions, support one another. It's amazing. And you get four monthly coaching calls. So each month, you will be on a live coaching call through Zoom with myself and Amy and everybody else that's in the mentorship level. 
we're on those calls for as long as possible, as long as we need to. I do some teaching and we do Q&A. So that's where you dig deep. You ask all your questions about your dog. Um, mentorship level is if you want to pay in full, $385. If you want to do a payment plan, it's $92 for five months. It is a there is a 30 day money back guarantee. We want you to be happy. We want you to see this transformation in your dog. And if you're not and you're and I don't care what the reason is, it doesn't matter what the reason is. If you decide within 30 days, this isn't for me, you just reach out to us, let us know and we refund your money. It's a no question ask 30 day money back guarantee. I can guarantee if you do the work and you stay in the program, you're going to see amazing transformation with your dog. You are going to see the aggression stop. It, it just it just does. It's amazing because your dog needs some feedback that nobody knows, nobody's giving them. But anyway, I don't want to get into the program. Sorry, I just get very excited about it. There's another level. You can join the VIP level. That's pay in full of $13.99 or 10 payments of $167. You get two calls per month, um, two group coaching calls per month, and you get three coaching calls with Kim Brophy, the author of the book, Meet Your Dog, as well as we will send you the book, Meet Your Dog. If you join a mentorship level, you need to buy that yourself. All right, click that link. This is only available, so I don't, if you are gonna watch this at some later time, this is only available at the moment through this video right now, through uh, January 13th at midnight. So you've got more than 24 hours to think about it. And if you've been struggling with your dog's aggression and you've tried all these things, you've tried daycare, you've tried doing more socialization and you're still feeling blamed and shamed and hopeless and frustrated, your dog is too. So do it for you, do it for your dog. This is not about length of time. This is about, are you committed to your dog? And I know you are, and I'm looking forward to seeing you inside the course. Any questions, you know where to find us. I respond to every YouTube comment that comes I get notified and I answer uh, that same day. All right, you guys, I'll see you in the course.